you've ever deep-throated a branch while night navigating, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like, and comment. Guys, the comment section is out of control. If you want to see what it feels like to be a disappointed dad, go ahead and read through it. I love you guys. But get in there. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. Subscribe. You can save a lot of money on normal things that people don't typically save money on. It's not a scam. It does actually work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it on this channel. If you're looking for a sick plaid and bags and gloves, we have Vertex and, of course, LEX Ammunition for your ammunition needs. Discount code Grantham. Ladies, gentlemen, and, of course, MG42s, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the MP5 and specifically why I believe, and many others believe, that the MP5 is still, to date, the best submachine gun in the world. Now, there are a lot of things going into this, but before we start that, let's talk about timeless designs. What do I mean by timeless designs? I mean firearm designs that have endured, you know, designed 30, 40, maybe 100 years ago, but despite the many uh, tries of other companies to come up with better designs, these older designs have not been ousted. You have weapons like the M2 Browning, the Browning High Power, the M16, the AKM, the AK-74, the FAL. These are firearms that have just not been bested for a variety of reasons. They're not, they're not perfect, uh, far from it. They continue to get updates, but the base design was so good and the ergonomics are so good and everything just worked well enough that despite the, you know, the best of the best coming at them, these haven't been uh, innovated above yet. And that definitely holds true for firearms like the MP5. The MP5 is a very interesting design. It came out in about the mid to late 60s. And ever since that Iranian raid by the SAS in the 80s, I think it's been cemented in popular culture. I remember as a kid watching Stargate, not the TV series with the P90, I'm talking the movie, I think it was lit as hell. Uh, and they're using MP5s, and I thought, what a cool little gun. And I remember as a kid playing Half-Life and playing Counter-Strike and using the MP5 and being like, ah, this is cool, yeah, I love the MP5. You know, having no idea what I'm doing as a kid. I started reading the book Small Arms, Salute, Small Arms uh, of the World when I was a kid and you know, learned a little bit more. And as I've gotten older and as I've gotten the opportunity to um, shoot these and to play with these and to use these, I've come to appreciate the firearm a lot more. So why is it that the MP5 is suddenly seeing a resurgence in popularity? Um, you know, what, what, what caused it? Well, I think there are many factors. I think ultimately what it comes down to is supply. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of supply of MP5s before, but now you have a lot of great companies creating some pretty good to acceptable clones that have now flooded the market at still kind of pricey prices, but still well within the realm of possibility for a lot of people. You have great companies making phenomenal uh, clones like Dakota Tactical, uh, probably among the highest of the high when it comes to uh, uh, H&K type designs. Um, you have guys like Zenith, which is who I have, what many would consider an acceptable manufacturer. Um, you, of course, have Omega. You have PTR. You have tons of different manufacturers coming to the fray. Uh, coming out with their own MP5s, and of course you have H and K with their, with, you know, making their original MP5s as well that are out on market. But the point is, is that, is that there's a lot more supply than there previously was, and the MP5 is a phenomenal firearm because a lot of people are rediscovering how great this thing is and was. And I also would like to think that it has something to do with um, competition. Uh, competition has increased the amount of pistol caliber carbines being used, and typically those are uh, tricked out ARs, uh, running Glock mags and comps and all that type of stuff, and those do shoot soft, but they also don't have the reliability that the MP5 has, and they still don't shoot quite as soft as the MP5 does now. They're getting very close, and they definitely beat it out in other uh, venues, which we'll talk about here, but to date in my mind, as an overall package, the MP5 has not been defeated yet. And let's talk about why that is. So what it really comes down to with the MP5, just starting right off the bat, is it comes down to the action. Typically, most pistol caliber carbines use blowback, direct blowback. Anything from the Sten to the MP40 to many others use a direct blowback design because it's simple, it's reliable, and it's very cheap to do. Uh, this includes ARs that are in 9mm, almost all of them with the exception of a couple that are radially delayed blowback, but for the most part, almost all of them use a direct blowback 
it's good, it's functional, it's reliable. However, it also recoils more than a 5.56, which is uh, odd. Why would you why would you use that? And I understand that there each you know it comes down to cost of ammo and that type of thing. But it's always struck me as odd that people are buying these pistol caliber carbines that recoil more than 5.56 rifles. It never really sat well with me, and I never was comfortable with it. And now come in with the MP5, which recoils much less than the 5.56, and I can definitely take this a little bit better. I can accept that because the 9mm isn't exactly a ballistically uh, energetic round compared to like the 5.56 or others. So it makes a lot more sense to me to have a low recoiling, easy to control gun that's a 9mm rather than something that's direct blowback and requires a lot of doodads to make it uh, recoil as much as this thing does. So let's get into it. So the MP5 uses a roller delayed system. The roller delayed system is genius first off and second massively, massively reduces the recoil that you feel. It's also buttery smooth. When you're firing this thing in full auto, it's an amazing feeling. Um, there's nothing quite like, like it. It's almost like firing a 22. If you ever fired like a 10-22 or any of the other, uh, um, you know, 22 caliber rifles that are automatic and they're just super smooth, it feels like nothing's moving around. That's what the MP5 feels like. There's this, you feel the bolt cycling, you feel it stripping rounds and you hear it firing and stuff. But besides that, there's not a whole lot going out going on when it comes to the MP5. And it's for that reason I think a lot of people um, have loved the MP5 and that the MP5 has been used for a long time. Now of course it clips in certain ways because of the proliferation of body armor and the uh, disability of the 9mm to penetrate that. But still, the MP5 still has many uses today. So the biggest reason in my mind why the MP5 is so successful is how great it feels to shoot. There's just not a way to describe it other than to say that as far as 9mm go, it is without a doubt the smoothest, the lightest, and the best recoiling weapon that you can possibly get your hands on. Now with those out of the way, let's talk about why this thing is still successful because there are a couple of areas where it's eclipsed. Now we're going to start go and go ahead from the tip all the way to the butt like we usually do with these MP5s. So starting here at the tip, we have a threaded barrel and also a tri-lug attachment. So depending on the MP5 that you get and the, you know, what you get on it, you might have one or the other. But I've always been a fan of the tri-lug. It's kind of, in my mind, kind of the original uh, mounting system for suppressors on MP5 type systems. And not suitable for many other designs with higher pressure rounds, but for a 9mm, the tri-lug is very easy to put on. You simply pop it on, twist it, and your suppressor is on. I've always been a fan of the tri-lug. The barrels. So it comes to MP5s, um, they're very accurate. I can easily make 120 plus yard shots of this um, out to 200. How ener energetic is a nine millimeter round at that distance? Uh, probably not very, but would I want to stand in front of it? Of course not, nobody would. But um, they are, in my opinion, uh, about as accurate as you can be. Uh, I, I don't think that these are, you know, point, you know, five MOA guns in any sense of, or form or fashion. I don't believe that these are point five MOA guns, but they are definitely as capable as you are when it comes to uh, accuracy. MP5 Navy right here, a little four round group right here, about, about this size. Uh, running iron sights with the wind, pretty happy with that. All right, moving up from the barrel, the MP5 is very interesting in its reloading mechanism. So the reloading mechanism of the MP5 is this cocking handle right here. So when you reload, what you need to do is you need to pull back on the cocking handle, lock it back. You need to eject the round, you put in a fresh round, and then you drop it. This is, of course, uh, not nearly as smooth as a reloading mechanism as something like on an AR-15 where you simply drop the magazine, pop in a new magazine, hit the bolt release. Because on the MP5, there is no bolt hold open feature. What that means is that when I get to the last round, the ejection port doesn't stay open so that I can simply slap in a new thing and drop it. Um, rather, it stays closed, it goes to a dead man's click, and I then have to reload the gun. So this is uh, the case where certain weapons like the MPX, uh, the Scorpion, and a couple other newer uh, submachine guns definitely uh, do a lot better than the MP5. 
So if there was something that could be updated in the MP5, I would definitely say it would be the reloading mechanism, where a bolt hold open feature and a simple way to drop the bolt would be a wonderful addition. And as much as I love uh, the reloading cadence on the MP5, it's as fun, as cool as it looks, it's just not very efficient compared to many of the modern techniques. Another problem with the MP5 is this magwell does not leave a lot of room for air. So you have to be pretty dead on the money to make it work. Um, it'd be great if you had a little bit more flair, a little bit more guide to get that magazine in. So that's a definite improvement I could see to the MP5 as well. Another thing that I think is interesting on the MP5s is reloads themselves. So when you fire the last round, you lock it back, just like I said, check the magazine. Once you put up, pop in that fresh magazine, what a lot of people like to do is you need to then drop this cocking handle right now to strip and load the first round. Um, for the longest time, people have slapped it, me included. But as I've trained more, as I've shot more with this, I've come to the conclusion that much like with an AKA where you push uh, a magazine out with the magazine all the way, and then you rock it in, it's wasted movement. Uh, rather, rocking out that AK mag with your thumb and slapping it in is faster, much in the same way when I rock that magazine in, instead of bringing my hand up and slapping it, I just bring my hand up directly on it and release it in that way. Now, what's interesting about this is I've seen this technique being used more and more as I've seen more and more people um, getting their hands on the MP5. And what was really cool to me was I was watching the newest Call of Duty trailer, and the way the people reload on that was actually the same way. So apparently they've been consulting with the right people because that reload is, in my opinion, the best way to reload the MP5 at this time. Now, of course, there are other ways to reload the MP5. Um, my dad, Travis Haley, has also said that you could download the magazine or use very worn-in MP5 magazines and that when you go to Dead Man's Click, instead of locking the charging handle back, you simply strip out the magazine, pop in a fresh one, and then simply charge the charging handle. Now, the problem with this is if you have a full magazine on an MP5, it is very, very difficult to lock in a full magazine on a closed bolt, which is why most people tend to lock it back. So if you download your magazines, it definitely works, but the question is, is if you get your hands on a 30 and you don't realize it and you try to use that technique, it's not gonna work for you. So realize that there are pluses and minuses to everything when it comes to reloading or trying out different methods on the MP5. In any case, I do believe that the reloads on the MP5 can be vastly improved with an improved model. But for now, I do accept that this is just a quirk of the MP5 and it's still a superior despite the slower reloading mechanism. All right, handguards. Handguards is one of the things about the MP5 that has kind of uh, followed an evolution much like the M4 family of rifles has, where the handguards in the MP5 are very easy to switch out. And because of that, it's allowed for a variety of different um, accessories and mechanisms to be installed in place of the handguard or to replace the handguard. So in this case, I have an M-Lock handguard from Midwest Industries. Another really great M-Lock handguard is from Dakota Tactical, who makes probably, in my opinion, one of the best. But on this one, I have the Midwest Industries, and I do like it quite a bit. This allows me to mount M-Lock accessories wherever I need them. It's very sturdy, and it works very well. There are other uh, things from Midwest Industries that, allow, that add M-Lock to the top or Picatinny to the top of the caulking tube, which allow you to mount things that you might need, like a forward peck or, some, or a maul or something like that. Um, besides that, you of course have the classic Knight's Armament Picatinny rail for the MP5 that has been used just everywhere. Those work very well. You have the classic Surefire four ends that allow you to have a light in there, and those, of course, work very well. Now, for me, I prefer to have some type of forward grip on my um, most of my rifles. It's just more comfortable for me. And I know Tony Cowden and Frank Proctor are very disappointed in me. I understand. I'll take that disappointment. I've been disappoint a lot of people before. But um, that's why I prefer the M-Lock or a Picatinny so I can get my hands on it. I know Lucas um, Botkin from T-Rex Arms prefers the Picatinny because he finds that the M-Lock handguard is a little too skinny for his taste when it comes to uh, getting his hand around it, which is funny since he's so skinny himself. Burned. Um, <laughs> moving back, also you have um, sling mounts for uh, you know, your slings on this particular handguard, which is another reason why I like it. Less things I have to deal with. It's also very lightweight, really helps with the balance.
Magazines. So magazines on the MP5 are plentiful. They aren't terribly expensive. You know, brand new HK magazines are a little bit more pricey. You know, you're looking at uh, closer to like 60 bucks. But Zenith mags and other great mags or used HK mags can be had for not too much. Of course, much more expensive than you'd see from for like an AR-15. But the price, I think, is dropping from what I've seen. Now, what I really like about the magazines is how easy they are to load. Now, a lot of people just kind of schman these themselves with their hands, like a peasant. I'd highly recommend getting the ETS cam loader for rifle magazines. That allows you to simply strip the round straight out of the box and then brrr, 10 at a time, and you can load these things in like, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 seconds, maybe 10 seconds, super fast. Um, here's a video of me doing it right here. As you can see, uh, it's easy just to blow through a thousand rounds because it's so easy to load these magazines. Now, there are, of course, super aesthetic straight magazines as well. They don't feed quite as well. I do prefer to use the curved ones because uh, they, just feed, <laughs> they just feed a little bit better. God, I need to work on my terminology. Sights. So the standard HK sights that you find on MP5s are phenomenal. Um, uses the rear drum, you can have the diopter as long, large as you want to make sure you're getting enough light. And I've always been a big fan of them. Um, they're hooded to protect the aperture itself or the um, post itself. And to quote, you know, to paraphrase Carnicon, uh, they've seen more brains than a brain surgeon. And they're very efficient. Now, however, certain new advancements in firearms technology, most, most specifically optics, have allowed us to do some great things with the MP5. So right here on this particular build, I have a BNT low profile red dot mount that actually puts this micro, um, aimpoint micro uh, in absolute co-witness with these iron sights, which can be annoying for some people because you always have the iron sights in your window. So some people opt for a higher mount. There are various options. The, the mounts, the Picatinny mounts, these uh, MP5s are endless. Some go the entire length of the rail, some are short, some are larger, some are higher. Find one that works for you and that works with the stock that you have because the stock is gonna put your cheek at different heights depending on what you're doing. But in this case, I am a huge fan of the BNT mount with the Aimpoint Micro. It has worked very well as a kind of do everything setup, and I'm very accurate with this particular build. Also, some of the MP5 clones out there, like from Dakota Tactical and Mega and PTR, come with a rail already mounted to the top of the MP5. That way, you don't have to really screw with adding a mount. Personally, I prefer the ability to remove the mount and go to the MP5 the way God intended if I needed to. But if you prefer that Picatinny, you can obviously. You can have it permanently on there. Uh, lots of builders will do that for you. Now, I talked earlier about the roller delayed system in the MP5, which is very awesome, very reliable. However, in maritime environments, the roller delayed doesn't do nearly as well. And it's for that reason that when, even when the MP5 came out and was used in militaries, like say the Australian military, they still opted to use stems with suppressors and that type of thing because they operated so well in those environments. And it's for that reason and many others that the UMP was eventually made and i'm not a fan of the ump at all but the ump using a direct blowback is definitely more reliable in certain environments than the mp5 is so in certain environments the mp5 is definitely outclassed just due to the roller delayed system so depending on what you're doing if you're working maritime security you might want to not opt for an mp5 for those reasons and maybe get something else that's a little bit more tolerable that's going to be at more resistance say the mpx which does come close in certain ways of beating the mp5 but it still isn't quite there, sorry Sig. Even though you were adopted by the US military, I still don't love you. Um, moving from there, we have our lower. So we have our safety. The safety is one thing that isn't quite as good. So you can add an extended safety to be able to reach it more easily. Because my problem with the safety has always been that it's hard to just actuate um, like you would an AR-15. Most people end up running at the same side 
on the MP5. Now you can get extended ones that make it easier to hit, but understand that as they typically come, you know, vanilla, your vanilla MP5, uh, you're gonna have a little bit more issues hitting that. Now, one other place that the MP5 is outclass is going to be trigger. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're running a semi-auto gun, the trigger on MP5s definitely don't get as quick as guns that use AR-15 fire control systems. And that's a fact. Uh, AR-15 fire control systems like the Geisley and LaRue triggers and others are just so fast that they can't quite compete. 0.97, there it is. But that being said, when it comes to a submachine gun full auto, the MP5 is a very adequate trigger that I don't think is really beat. Uh, it's on par with everything out there. Now when it comes to semi-auto, it's definitely beat. So let's go ahead and let's ghost this trigger right here. So this particular trigger is a standard trigger from Zenith. However, it was worked on by their custom shop to be lighter. So let's go ahead and check it out. It should be about a four pound pull and we are clear. Let's check it out. Go ahead and put your finger on mine, gentlemen. Let's go ahead and ghost this. Ladies, MG42s, you're out there. All right, so we've got a little bit of play right there, about two centimeters. Hit our wall. Very crisp break at about four pounds. Good reset, let's try that one more time. A little bit of creep right there. About two stage trigger with about perhaps two pounds on that first one. Uh, reset, all right, Put up, let trigger the pressure off. A little bit of creep right there. Comes forward, pretty positive. Pretty simple, pretty short reset. Um, pretty good overall, not as good as of course an AR-15 fire control group but very, very close. So in my opinion, it's not massively outclassed, but it definitely is when it comes to its trigger. So moving back from the lower and the trigger and the safety, we go to our butt sock. So with the MP5s, um, there are so many butt socks out there. I opted to use the B&T folding butt sock right here. Um, this is an SBR, by the way, I hate that I have to register this and do an e-form on it. But the good news is that e-form ones right now are clearing in about a week to a couple weeks. And so it's very easy to get these done. It is, it's just a pain in the ass to get an SBR. I wish it wasn't that way. But in any case, I do believe that stocks are better than braces. I think that they function and work better. So it's for that reason that I do SBR most of my firearms. Anyhow, I use the BNT. I know it's not as classic of a look, however, um, those wire socks you get on the MP5A3s, they don't give you that great of a cheek weld. And so it's kind of harder to fire at distance or even kind of get consistent cheek welds. So I'm not a big fan of them. I love how they look though. Um, the original kind of A2 MP5 socks are wonderful. They look super badass and sexy, but these are super lightweight, accomplish kind of the same cheek weld um, while being lighter and in my opinion, just as good a looking. There is an option that allows you to have a longer length of poi if you're one of those long arm boys. So if you got that problem, make sure you, you uh, get one of the longer ones. Besides that, there are multiple stock options. I know uh, many people, including Lucas, a couple others are running the M4 stock adapters or the Picatinny adapters that allow them to run either SIG um, stocks or M4 stocks, which will put your cheek up higher because they'll become almost directly back. Because of that, if you have this low mount, that won't work for your cheek weld. Make sure you get a higher mount. So again, depending on what type of stock you have is gonna depend on what type of mount you're getting. Make sure that you match those up. Your stock is too high, this is too low. You're gonna be doing weird stuff trying to look through that sight right there. Now in this case, if you notice, the stock comes lower off the back of the receiver. That allows me to get the correct height through the optic right there, which is about absolute. It's very close to what you uh, consider like an absolute type height on an AR, which is very comfortable to shoot. In the future, I'm definitely gonna screw with having higher mounts and working with that because I've seen a lot of people have a lot of success with doing that. And now that we've talked about that, let's talk about a little bit about setup on the MP5s. So I don't have this one set up for night vision right now. I have this one just set up for you know general low light work and that type of stuff. So I am running a BCM grip. I have it angled forward. That's kind of my thing I do. The pressure pad for it, I've moved from the top where I had it originally taped, it didn't work that well, to the grip itself, so I can actuate it off the grip as needed. Um, it's pretty comfortable to use. If I'm not using it, I just kind of slide my fingers a little bit forward, I kind of have to reach for it a little bit. But it's very simple uh, to use. I am running a mod light on here. The mod lights are, again, among my favorite lights out there when it comes to uh, M-Lock mounted. I do love the air sockets as well, but the mod lights are so damn bright, it's hard to say no to them. 
I'm running just a normal tail cap here with a switch if I need to hit it as well. <sighs> Going from there, I'm running a Ferro Concepts Slingster. Um, very simple setup, but again, Ferro Concepts are among my favorite slings out there and I continue to use them. Now, when it comes to magazine pouches and that type of thing, a lot of people ask me what I'm using. So when it comes to magazine pouches, um, I know that there are specialized magazine pouches for them, but I honestly just take an M4 magazine pouch from STAC, uh, one of their Kiwis, and I simply stick two MP5 mags in there and that works fine. I've never had any problem with that. It's a little bit tight of a fit. Um, as far as kind of grabbing one, you have to practice a little bit, but they work fine. Now, as far as carrying more mags for LARPing and that type of thing, um, there are chest rigs. There are a lot of great chest rigs out there. You have the Haley Strategic Micro Rig. Um, you have the Spirit Systems Rig that can be rigged up for MP5 use and that type of thing. Um, in my case, what I ended up going for was I talked to Extreme Gear Labs, who has done a lot of work for Haley in designing his rigs. And we talked about designing a rig um, specifically for my MP5 usage. So right here, it will fit five MP5 mags. And then in addition to that, I have um, my pistol mags, I have a stuff it pouch, just like what I loved on the original Haley rig. And I have a general purpose pouch to hold a variety of things. On the sides, I have extra pouches either for multi-tools or for magazines or whatever I need back there. I of course have a mission hanger pouch for medical or other things with a front mount for either small IFACs, tourniquets, that type of thing. So I'm a huge fan of this rig. It is also all Velcro, so it can easily be changed out and uh, suited for different designs and that type of thing. So I'm a huge fan of it. He also added in the H rig. I'm a bigger fan of the H rig versus the X rigs that the Helios Strategic uh, rigs used. And when I talked to Travis about that, he said, well, that's because you're not built like a recon marine. So I got, I got roasted pretty hard. But at the same time, uh, that doesn't change the fact that I like the H harness more than the X harness on them. So again, if you're looking for a chest rig, I would highly recommend that you take a look and find out what you need and what's going to work for you. In my case, the Extreme Gear Labs, I think, is one of the best options, and he does some really good work out there. So what does it come down to? What it comes down to is the MP5. There's nothing that feels like it when you shoot it. And because of that, it continues to be, and I think has staying power for a long time until somebody comes up with a design that is much like what I said with those improvements. Flared magazine well, easier bolt release, still roller delayed, um, with a couple other features to bring into the modern age. But until that happens, the MP5 and its clones are here to stay. So get out there and get your hands on one. If you've never had a chance to shoot one automatic, they are amazing. If you haven't had a ch chance to shoot one semi-automatic, they're still amazing. They feel ages better than any of the Gucci stuff out there. And I will say, again, like a fully tricked out JP AR 9 mil will shoot softer than MP5. But at the cost of reliability. There's nothing that has the reliability and the smoothness of the shooting like the MP5. So it takes a lot of work for those ARs to get there. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you liked this. I hope you enjoyed the talks about the MP5 and how they have just crushed life for a long time. But as we know, as cool as the MP5s look, and they are without a doubt the coolest weapons out there, you're not gonna look cool if you don't know what you're doing. Get some training. Haley Strategic, Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Esoteric, the Direct Action Resource Center, Tony Cowden, Frank Proctor, Pat McNamara, tons of great guys ready to give their knowledge to you. Get out there, get training, because that is what matters. And of course, looking cool. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got nothing else for you. Last thing for you guys, your career matters, jobs matter, work matters, but what really matters also is friends and family. If you get to the end of a successful career and you're very rich, however, what it's cost you is your family and everything. And you get to the end and you're alone. Maybe it wasn't worth it. So remember to take care of those individuals because human interaction, kindness, love, all that kind of stuff, that's what matters. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves.